Why do you train the way you train? Ask yourself that and don't have any preconceived notions. Keep watching this video. Can't resist us. Clearly I find myself living inside a shell. All of this pain. Over the course of the last six months, I've had some of the most successful training I've had in probably the last four years of my training career. I cut down about 20 pounds in body weight and I sit at about 9% body fat currently. I gained strength on my deadlift, maintained strength on my squat and bench, and even put on muscle in the first part of this training cycle. What did I do differently? I think a large part of what was so successful is I approached my training perspective and modalities from the lens of enjoying my training and absolutely just falling back in love with training again. Now, I know that sounds trite, but this is something I think a lot of you guys need to think more about. Oftentimes, we approach our training from the perspective of what is optimal on paper, what is going to produce the most optimal hypertrophy response in the pectoralis major muscle. Like We get a little carried away sometimes of what we should be doing rather than what we want to be doing. And there's a fine-tuned balance we need to strike here, but me training a little bit more unorthodox again, getting back to my roots of movement variability and just falling in love with training. That's why I'm doing certain things that I just love to do. In a perfect world where everyone's a logical creature, are doing things like you know landmine presses or deficit push-ups, the most optimal power building exercises that have carryover to your bench press or growing your pecs? Probably not from an anatomical or biomechanical standpoint, but are these things gonna be things that I absolutely love doing and will apply myself to the hardest? Yes, at least for me personally, and I think this is why I proposed the question in the beginning of this video, why do you train the way you train? I'm not trying to sound like some motivational speaker. I just want to start putting out content that I actually believe in a little bit more on my channel. And I think this is something people need to ask themselves. Testing, testing. Hopefully you can hear me I'm talking on my AirPods like a douchebag. We're about to go on a walk. This video is going to be more than just, uh, let me turn off my lights. This video is going to be more than just some tips. Um, although I, I'm going to give you guys some hard hitting tips here. We're going to start actually with tip number one. We're going to go visit my friend and client Umar, who actually lives upstairs in the same apartment complex as me. So tip number one. How can you better your training? How has this cut on so successfully for me? Tip number one is gonna be get goal oriented. You have to have goals in mind. For me, it's powerlifting meets. For me, it's things with YouTube. It's strength oriented numbers, but big goals are very important. And the one that I really oriented this goal around was cutting down to the 198 pound weight class. So that way I wasn't just cutting for no reason other than vanity. There's something a little bit deeper there. You got to get goal oriented. We're going to talk to Umar about this. 
God damn it, the one time Umar's probably not home. That's okay, we're gonna insert a clip of him talking about it since he's not home. We're gonna go on this walk, so let's keep talking about getting goal-oriented. Cutting gets extremely hard, especially when you start to get near 10% body fat as a guy, or maybe even slightly higher than that, and as a female, probably 12 to 13%. You're gonna start having a lot of hormone changes, hormonal changes, and you're gonna have a lot of issues just with adherence and sticking to the diet. And even before all that, there's gonna be a lot of like mental uh, roadblocks you're gonna hit. And I have found the majority of the time when people quit their diets and don't have success with it, it's because they don't have a goal in mind. When you have some tangible date, a goal, something bigger in front of you other than just vanity, I mean, sometimes that works out for some people, but for those less pretentious, having something kind of objective in front of you helps a ton. One of the biggest things for me is that I was able to really hyper focus in on making such a hard weight class goal. Uh, I mean, to cut from 226 pounds down to 208 to 206 and then do a water cut from there, that's substantially hard. Not only am I cutting so much, but I'm also dealing with the fact I'm gonna have to do a water cut, but that amps me up. That gives me something to aim for. I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. And when you're going through your training, and you have those days where your capacity is just shot and you don't want to do your accessory exercises or you don't want to you know, do things, you'll, you'll remember like, oh fuck, I got to make weight. And when you have to make weight, you're going to want to do those accessory exercises because you know time's running out. If, if there is no goal in mind, you're going to just push that shit off until the next day or completely quit the cut. So it's really important to have a goal in mind. Now, this doesn't make powerlifting my only thing. In fact, I consider myself in the smallest sense, a power lifter. I'm much more a bodybuilder, someone who just likes to be strong at everything other than just the big three. That's why I don't specialize. And again, at the start of this video, I asked you, why do you train for the things you train? It's very important that you understand just because you have a goal like a powerlifting meet, that does not have to be your whole life. Umar is actually a great example of someone who uses powerlifting meets to keep him oriented around strength goals because his biggest problem was he would just do a million exercises, never progress on anything. He would never reach progressive overload or progressive tension overload. His muscle building attributes would never get achieved. His goals wouldn't get achieved because he was aimless. So he uses powerlifting means not for cutting scenarios, but rather to ensure he's progressively loading things like his squat, his bench, his deadlift. But he doesn't really enjoy powerlifting beyond just the thrill the meet's kind of fun for him. But it gives him something to aim for. This is important. Getting my steps in. Okay, motherfuckers. So tip number two. Tip number two is going to be do a shit ton of volume, but on healthy movement. So one thing I really realized during this cut is that I could handle training volume way more than I thought. The issue was I for years believed I was a low volume responder because I would get really beat up and fatigued if I did a lot of squat, bench, or deadlift volume. What I've found is that I can handle a ton of volume and actually most of my trainees can as well. Of course, there's exceptions there. However, I cannot do a lot of repetitive movement volume. So I had to hone my training selection in or my exercise selection rather in around the idea of ensuring that I'm doing a variety of exercises. Hence why, again, movement variability is key. So not only am I getting the benefit of just doing things that I enjoy doing when I do my deficit push-ups, when I do my Cossack squats, my dips, whatever, these things that maybe don't have the most carryover to your power lifts, I'm able to do a shit ton more volume this way. I build more muscle, or at least stimulate the muscle more. And then on top of that, I'm getting in way more caloric expenditure. So my workouts are much more dense and much more movement savvy than they have been in a long time. And I think this has hugely helped out the cut and my success in training the last six months. Hey there, still walking, getting the steps in. Okay, so tip number three, diet really hard and strict for five to six days a week. Actually more strict than I think most people do who follow the IIFYM model, essentially just using thermodynamics to lose weight calories in versus calories out. That's a great way of explaining the way we lose fat, but it's a surefire way of fucking shit up when you keep a bunch of snacks in your house. We're gonna talk about that later. But my point is diet very strict for five to six days a week and then use one to two cheat days. So I, I talked about this in my last dieting video. Put simply, I feel the humongous stress reduction 
and the mental stress reduction of knowing a huge either cheap meal or cheap day is coming at least once per week allowed me to sustain my cut for a long period of time without burning out. There's even weeks where I take two days and just eat, I don't wanna say whatever I wanted, but quite, woo, I tripped there, but quite a bit of junk food. The other five to six days a week, I would basically eat really stringent, uh, kind of healthier foods. And I also took into account just kind of the health effects of uh, the diet a little bit more than I have in past times. So there's quite a bit there, but I think the success here was really found in the fact that I could go hard for five to six days a week. And then one to two days a week, usually one, I'd kind of blow it, have some fun. If I was going out somewhere with a dinner with someone I could eat and not feel like I had to like, you know, stress about doing extra cardio or something. I could enjoy a humongous stress reduction. It relieved the water weight for me. It made, uh, I think the diet actually more successful. And I've touched on this in past videos. Okay, tip number four, is it four? I don't even know what tip we're on. Uh, lots of outside cardio, hey, what I'm doing right now, and lots of walking. I talked about this also in my previous dieting video. This video is a little different, so I feel like I wanna to touch on this again, also for anyone who hasn't seen it. But the majority of my cardio came this time from getting in my daily steps. So I would average anywhere from five to 15,000 steps a day. There was many days I was taking 15,000 steps. I would also hike a lot, not strenuous hikes. I'm not going on eight mile roundabouts, but what I'm doing is really focusing on just like a quick two to three mile hike that burns maybe three, 400 calories, but isn't me sitting on a stair mill monotonously going for you know 30 minutes at a time. One, it's just so unenjoyable. Two, it's highly stressful. Three, it's highly repetitive. I actually found like biking and stair mills and things of that nature burn my quads out quite a bit and affect my squatting. Running also affects me. So instead I just hike, I walk. I, I move in real life and that's been a huge benefit for me and really allowed again for sustainable results. If I'm staring at a beautiful sunset while I'm hiking, I'm gonna wanna do that. If I'm staring at the fucking screen of a elliptical while I'm like listening to some music to amp me up, I'm not gonna wanna do that. Tip number five, simple. No snacks in the fucking house. I don't give a fuck about IFYM. I told you guys my videos are gonna start being different. <laughs> I'm kind of just being me, to be honest. This has always been me. <laughs> I'm a very opinionated, very strong-willed person. I just don't always show it on YouTube. But these days, I don't give a fuck. Stop putting snacks in your house. Why would you do that? I don't care about IFYM. Why the fuck would you have a bunch of junk food in your house? It makes no sense. That is not gonna set you up. It's like being in a relationship and going to a strip club. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like. Of course you're gonna see that ass shaking in front of you and wanna do something. Like, come on now. You gotta do better than that. No snacks in the house, really that simple. That was a humongous change that I made this diet. And I think this was really helpful. Oh my God, that car alarm. We're gonna keep this one short because that car alarm's driving me insane. People don't put car alarms on your car. They don't do anything. Oh my God. So the reason this helped me though was mainly because I just stopped craving food. Having those less hyper palatable foods uh, or, or having less of them in the house really allowed me to desensitize my palate to sugar. And now when I would eat something like a Greek yogurt and some kind of uh, granola, that tasted like candy to me compared to, and now I'm all spitting everywhere, compared to always craving a bunch of diet sodas and stuff, even those things I didn't keep in the house this time. Get rid of it. Got the gym shark on looking extra fuck boy. Okay, I also looking extra like no eyebrow status because of the sun glare. Anyway, tip number six. This might be the most important one on there. Have a community. What's up down there again? So I had to cut the last part because that damn car alarm was still going off. So tip number six, this one's kind of a double-edged sword. You gotta take this with a grain of salt, but it's a good tip. Join a community. This one is hugely beneficial, but you have to choose the right community. So here's the thing. I have a close knit circle of friends at my local gym, Full Circle Barbell that espouse the values that I want to represent with my training. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. But joining a community, whether it be getting under a coach who has athletes that all represent what you wanna become, whether it is your local gym or a Facebook group, social media I'm not the biggest on, but whatever, surround yourself with people that you want to kind of emulate in ways. 
and pick up on those habits and kind of immerse yourself in there. But be careful when you do this because I have actually joined communities, some of them being powerlifting gyms, for instance, which actually led to me sacrificing values of my own training, which is kind of the point of the start of this video is that me asking you that question, proposing the idea as to why you train the way you train. Sometimes we adopt values from these communities that we do not realize we are adopting that negatively impact us. For me, it was the eight minute rest periods and eating gummy bears and shit between sets because I need carbohydrates to do my powerlifting workouts. Like stuff like that I don't wanna be surrounded by. Full circle barbell where I train at is not a powerlifting gym and I love that. I absolutely despise powerlifting gyms because they don't, they don't represent the values that I wanna get out of my training. And so you have to pick the correct community, but when you find that, it elevates you. And this is very important to understand. Okay, I'm gonna finish this walk and get to the next part of the video. Okay, this time I called Umar. He's definitely home. We're gonna go see Umar. Boom, kick door open. When your friend lives in your same apartment, he just leaves the door open for you to come in. Wait, where's he at? There he is, back there. <laughs> I need everything. Is this good? Yeah, it's good. Your curls are good? Yeah, the curls are good. <laughs> I'm leaving that shit in, bro. My ways are good. Uh, okay, wait, Umar, why the fuck do you do powerlifting meets, bro? So, I don't like to identify myself as a powerlifter. You're definitely not a powerlifter, neither am I. I thoroughly enjoy the fact that I can constantly focus on progressive overload in a really fun and predictable way and take my attention off my physique because that's the biggest thing about powerlifting that I love. It keeps you, like, numbers-oriented without getting too addicted to it keeps you goal oriented. Yeah? yeah. That's literally what I told him earlier. I didn't even tell him what I said in the video. I literally was just like, why do you do powerlifting meets? And like the point of this is to insinuate that if you have a big goal in mind, it's going to make you progressively overload for him. He's not a powerlifter. Neither am I actually. That's the funny. That's why I don't do national level meets. It works, but can we show him? Can we show him? Can we show him bro? Show can we show him what? just a little bit of the app? The app, a little okay. bit of the app, bro. Yeah, okay. Because you're you're a glaring example of amazing results over the last years under Prime, and now we got a fucking sick app coming, bro. Oh shit, Prime Strength. Loaded Logging with your in. Gmail. So you got your videos. Group coaching coming soon. We're gonna have videos. You're gonna have all your workouts displayed. This is really rudimentary. We still got months left of work here before this is finalized, but guys, the Prime app is coming. You'll even have your own profile. Okay, that's it. That's all we're showing him. That's all we're showing. This guy created all this shit by himself. How badass is that? All by myself. All by yourself. All natty. All natty, bro. <laughs> I'll show you guys the view in a second. Finishing up here with some uh, outside cardio, like one of the tips in this video. Oh, it's beautiful out here. My YouTube channel is going to be a little different, guys. Uh, still informative, still hype, still going to post the hype videos, but just kind of posting whatever the hell I want to post. Look at this. That's gorgeous. Uh oh, don't fall down there. Ah, uh, all right, guys. That's the end. That's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, or don't. Don't really care either way.